Hi, I'm Warren, minister at Greenford Baptist Church, and welcome to one of the uh, uh, short um, little talkettes that we try to do during the week to continue to encourage uh, you, encourage ourselves, encourage each other, as we are called to do as followers of Jesus Christ, to daily try and encourage each other. I am uh, talking to you from uh, uh, my attic, which has become a, a second uh, place or for me of being uh, both an office, a uh, place of contact uh, to keep with as much as possible, staying in a um, less time uh, going to the church building. It's also a place where i glad I can come to. Um, I have the, granted the privilege of a space where I can come to to spend uh, time with the Lord as well. And I suppose it's about that that partly that I believe that I uh, believe that God wants me to to talk to you about today. Uh, we're in the uh, I believe it's the fourth stroke coming into the fifth, or it could be the fifth coming to the sixth time um, now of. Uh, lockdown and it's called and I know there are people who are having to self-isolate there are people who are furloughed from work there are those who unfortunately have been made redundant from work completely uh, and are not earning uh, any income at all there are those who uh, are still continuing to go to work uh, those who may be in the building industry or any kind of industry really where is the necessity for you to continue working you could be working from home or you could be actually going out because you have to and clearly we have our frontline um, key workers frontline staff um, those who are key workers that do need to continue to be at work from um, working in all of the industry, uh, both the NHS, police, fire service, etc., who who are working exceptionally hard and exceptionally long hours, to which we as a nation are still incredibly grateful for. So we have a, a gamut of people, lots of different spectrums, and then we have people who are introverts, uh, who may be absolutely loving this time of needing to... Uh, uh, be trapped in their homes, um, who are actually enjoying this time of isolation, of time of spending time with God. And then we have the other, we have extroverts, who maybe by now you've got to that point of, uh, this is now, if I'm blunt, doing my head in. Um, I can't socialise in the way I want to, I can't, you're probably desperate to go to work now. Um, um, but to be with your friends, your family, uh, those outside of your immediate household. And as we know at this time, we have to follow the guidelines of our government that are making it very clear that they see this uh, as the, the way to currently see a slowdown and eventually beating, as they call it, the coronavirus. And it's at these times that these measures, yes, on one level, on our heads, we're going, yes, it's right, it's proper, this is what I should be doing. On another level, the heart and the emotions and, 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 and your personality that's saying, I want to go and see people, I want to be with people. And then you've got these messages that clearly make it very clear that we're saying, God is saying, this is a time, this is a, uh, a word that's being used, a seal our moment, a time of being paused, a time of using this time to really invest in your relationship with him because I very much believe and you know if you look at my stuff that, that God wants to wants to make it that he's the center um, wants to invest time in us for them when we do eventually come out of this God's people have got uh, riches and stuff in stored up in this time of investment that God can then pour out to those who may not necessarily know him and as I said, for some of us who are natural invert, introverts, this is, wow, yeah, great. Um, uh, for those who are extroverts, and I, I sort of fall somewhere a little bit more extrovert, as you could imagine, strangely enough. Um, but for some of us, 
you know, I, I quite like uh, the isolation time. I, I like the small space sometimes. So I, I can fall into slightly either camp, but even I have to admit that I'm starting to get at point of where I'm also myself thinking, yeah, this is great. I'm loving spending this time with God and, and doing things differently. But even I'm like thinking, oh, I, I am miss, missing uh, the so socialising in the way that I like to. I'm missing the camaraderie with my uh, swimming friends, um, to which uh, um, if they're watching this, you know that I am. So even I'm starting to miss certain elements, and I'm sure you must be the same, or you may not be. But I felt God very clearly speak to me at the beginning of the week, and the more and more as he's spoken about it, more and more I believe this is what he wants to give, convey. And I suppose the word that's come to mind is, is either perseverance or even endurance. Normally when I think of the word endurance, I have this sense of, um, um, of, of running a race and, 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 and oh, must endure, keep going, keep going. Well, I believe this is also maybe a for us to pick up that endurance has so much more to it than maybe running a race. Let me read to you from, uh, I'm sure you was expecting me to say this now, Romans 5, uh, Romans chapter 5, verses uh, 1 to 11. No, nope. take that back, 1 to 5 actually. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God. Because what of Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us? Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us. Because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. And it's interesting in that Romans passage it, it is about when we run in to problems and trials and therefore then it can help develop endurance and so hence I get that feeling that normally endurance has this sense of when I'm exercising and running or, or or whatever else and this extra burst of endurance is needed and the imagery here that, that Paul is using uh, here in in Romans well I don't know about you but I'm I don't do a lot of running. I do much more swimming um, and, and, and have done less than I'd like to. I can see my swimming colleagues, if they're watching this, going, and, huh, hardly seen you. But um, it, the point being, I, I wish to go back to uh, very much that exercise. But for me, running at the moment is just, it's just not something I do. So I'm, doing, I'm, I'm grateful that I can get out and I can go and do some walking. But I suppose what for me here is for us that are trapped in or those of us that have got to work right on the front line at the moment. It's not something we've sort of run into. It's something that's almost been set upon us. And we don't do well as society, I'm sorry to say, with rules and restrictions. We, we believe in individual rights and, um, and uh, you know, my way should be the correct way. Well, at the moment, we need to think more as a community, which I, most of us are doing so. But this is the point where the, the endurance starts to wane. The, 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 the concept of keeping going um, is getting to us because boredom can set in. The sense of being restricted doesn't help. The not being able to do what I used to do before can really kick in now. Because, yeah, well, just because, because it's not there. And I suppose what God is trying to say is, well, listen, endurance is now the time. This endurance develops your strength of character. And this character 
strengthens a confident hope of your salvation. This this ability now of being able to, to, to keep going with God, to keep spending time with him, to persevere, to keep seeking his face, just to keep uh, yeah, seeking his presence, enduring in that, even at times when it's not exciting, but actually to endure in that, to keep going, to keep going, will produce within each of us a character, a strength of character that that is developed within us, a foundation, a deep root of character, which then eventually then produces real hope. I mean, genuine hope, not the, the fleeting, oh, I've just purchased something that will last for a, like a, a five minute wonder. This will be a real sense of wonder that will endure with God, a wonder of wanting to keep it going. Because I suppose when eventually we do get out of lockdown, I believe what God wants us to do is to develop and take with us stuff from what we're doing now into it to carry uh, this forward so it doesn't just get only last for what we call the lockdown months but it will be the wow i've learned stuff about me and about the lord and it's, it's developed something in me a character and a hope that hates me makes me see other trials, other situations as, as mere trivia now because I spent this time. So I suppose what I want, feel God wants to really convey is endure, persevere, keep going. Don't, don't allow boredom. Don't allow stuff to, to get on top of you keep going with the Lord. I do recognise I could be talking to people who will find being locked down absolutely difficult because it just does not suit your character. It may be uh, for mental health issues, emotional uh, uh, issues and I recognise all of that and I'm doing a very broad brushstroke talk here. But we're still talking about the same God, the same Lord who can lift us above our situations can lift us above our personality and our character and take us into a, a glorious place with him that, that that fills our very depth of our heart and our spirit if we continue to persevere i suppose that's why paul was talking about it that's why he says here very clearly you know when we run into problems and trials for we know they help us develop endurance and endurance develops our strength of character and our character strengthens our confident hope of salvation and this hope doesn't lead to any disappointment because we know how much god dearly loves us so i want to encourage you to do so i want to read just finally from uh, another version of that it's called the passion translation um it, it it's n yeah not a direct translation per se but it it conveys the uh, it, the authors see this as conveying something of the father heart of god i believe so it reads exactly the same verses our faith in jesus transfers god's righteousness to us and he now declares us flawless flawless in his eyes this means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with god all because of what our lord jesus the anointed one has done for us our faith guarantees us permanent access into his marvelous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with god what incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. But that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence, knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. And patient endurance will refine our character. And proven character leads us back to hope. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy, because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. And these times can feel like pressure. 
that sometimes with pressure comes a release valve that bursts out and allows out. And in this case, this pressure can refine to the point that what bursts upon us and through us is God's love and his, yeah, his endless love that can just burst through and flood our hearts and our minds. So keep enduring, keep persevering with the Lord, even when it, you really don't feel like it or this is just doing your head in. Let God do work on your head and your heart and your very being. Keep going. God bless to you.